Hello everyone, Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching. Today's video is going to be a video on how to identify uh, possible gang members and possible areas of gang activity. This video is intended for regular everyday people who may be either A, living in cities or working in areas of cities uh, that may have some gang activity going on or people who are planning on vacationing uh, to some larger cities and maybe passing through some areas that they've obviously never been before and knowing certain symbols and things like that uh, would be able to help them stay away from those kind of things. Uh, security officers could also benefit from this video, uh, especially ones who work in some more of the rundown uh, parts of the town and um, some law enforcement could probably find some benefit out of this uh, but probably not too much they're going to a going to have uh, a lot more first-hand knowledge or first-hand experience dealing uh, with a lot of these things and they'll just have their own training courses uh, within their own agency that they'll go to and some of them will even go off to um, more higher state level uh, classes or you know having a, a a designated gang officer or something like that for some of these smaller places but really this is just for the the common person and um, for a lot of the security folks out there uh, working different contracts different housing um, complexes things of that nature and some of these symbols or people you may come across so for getting into the symbols and uh, tattoos and, and stuff like that uh, basically some background on um, gangs, at least gangs in continental United States, because uh, I'm, you know, places like Italy and uh, Russia, uh, you know, they're gonna have obviously their own types of gangs, and I don't, I don't have any information on that. This is just for people who are inside the U.S. So gangs within the U.S., uh, you can break it down for the most part between folk nation and people nation. Um, Folk Nation is basically an alliance with a bunch of smaller gangs uh, that was formed in the late 70s. Um, gangs like Gangster Disciples, La Raza, Latin Eagles, um, and then also Crips uh, falling in under the Folk Nation. Uh, this came about um, when a guy by the name of Larry Hoover in Chicago created this and in response to this um, the people nation formed and it was an alliance of some street gangs and it comprised of the vice lords latin kings gay lords um, and also the bloods will fall under uh, people nation you also will have gangs like ms-13 um, which don't really fall under any of the folk nation or people nation. They may, in cert, some, certain subsets, may have an alliance with some of these groups that would fall under folk or people, but MS-13 itself doesn't, to my knowledge, really fall under uh, folk or people. Then you have um, motorcycle clubs, and again, they don't necessarily fall under folk nation or people nation. Again, they may have an alliance with some other group within their area, but they don't really fall under those. They're kind of like their own little category. Um, and then, of course, you have your white supremacist uh, folks who um, go out and do uh, their things under the, the banner of white supremacy. And then you've got some of your oddball stuff like juggalos, um, groups like straight edgers and like goth kind of things but uh, the one I'm going to be focusing on are the ones that you're probably going to be more familiar with like crips, blood, stuff like that. So um, with that being said um, even though you know crips you may have in one area uh, we'll use, use Los Angeles for example I believe the recent uh, numbers for Los Angeles is there's over 800 different sets of Crips out there. So you may have, 
I, I don't know any of the names of them over in LA, but I'm just using this as an, as an example. You may have 21st Street Crips, and then you may have Market Street Crips, or, or something of that nature. And there's 800 different uh, groups of Crips out there, with all having different leaders and in, in, um, in different types of hierarchy within their organizations. Their organizations, um, some of them are a little bit more intricate than others. Uh, there's been some that have actually tried to have an actual, um, I guess you could say overhead team, so to speak, where they had you know very easily identifiable people in different roles as if it was uh, some type of legit company. Obviously, they're not legit companies, uh, but then a lot of them, they don't really have the, the structure and everything there, they just kind of, they kind of wing it. Uh, a lot of your gangs, uh, I guess you could say, um, like civilizations have, have normally lived along waterways, rivers, things like that. Gangs, uh, I guess you could say, kind of um, follow the same, but they, uh, modern ones obviously now use the interstates, and that's obviously where they're, they're how they're moving their drugs. Um, you know, for example, coming down out of Chicago or, or something like that and, and moving down south uh, through uh, 65 and everything, uh, you'll have certain types of gangs that uh, will be in certain different areas along that way. Some of the symbols um, that are associated with these different groups uh, vary. And I'll be getting into what some of these symbols are. So uh, with Folk Nation, generally um, they run with things of six. So it could either be the number six uh, displayed somewhere. It could be something like a die with uh, six being shown on there or a set of dice, you know, showing that, you know, six has been rolled. Um, you have the Star of David, a winged heart, horns, a swastika, Playboy bunny, a sword, a pit or a pointed tail, um, and a pitchfork or a sigh. Sigh being the little weapon that uh, Raphael used in Ninja Turtles. Those are some of the common symbols you'll see with them. Under People Nation, uh, you'll have things that run in five. So you'll have a five pointed star or a, a a five-pointed um, crown, um, the dice, you know, they'll either have dice with five dots on there or a die with um, five dots. Um, they'll do things like have their identifiers to the left, so it'd be, you know, all their earrings they were on the left, um, a left pant leg rolled up, they have a hat that is tilted to the left, uh, things of that nature. And then some of your other gangs, uh, like one of the Latin gangs has a three-pointed star. Um, and then your white supremacist groups, they have their own symbols that fall in uh, for their stuff. Mostly a lot of it comes from... Um, the Nazi regime from World War II, you'll see a lot of that uh, type of symbols being used for their cause. And then some of them like MS-13, they're pretty basic. You, It's pretty much just 13 that you'll see, or MS, or that's, you know, a lot of times that's just about it. Uh, you won't see a whole lot of this more intricate stuff like they have with Folk Nation or People Nation. So. These symbols that they use can be in the form of tattoos or graffiti. And the tattoos, if you're seeing the tattoos of uh, a crown, of a five-pointed crown being on someone's forehead or something like that, um, or their neck, uh, that's a pretty good dead giveaway um, that they're part of a gang. Um, seeing these symbols spray-painted on the, the sides of buildings or 
abandoned vehicles or road signs or junction boxes, sidewalks, whatever, uh, that's a pretty good clear indication that there's some type of gang activity going on in that area. Now, with that being said, the gangs, they, they vary in sizes and in their intensity. So obviously someplace like Los Angeles, California is going to have some real deal, been there, done that kind of gang members. You go to some podunk little town, um, like in the middle of Kentucky somewhere, and someone's identifying as a crip, um, chances are they're really not about that life. Uh, they're just wanting to be a part of something, and crip was probably the best thing they could find uh, to, to identify as, which happens a lot. And it's a basic um, human trait. All humans want to be a part of something, uh, be a part of a group, a tribe. It's a kind of a, a carryover from the days of humans being hunter-gatherers. We worked in tribes, and that's what that's what humans do. They just find groups of people. Um, you, you, you think about your own workplace, um, your own social group of people uh, that you hang out with. If you take yourself out of the box and you, you look at that box and analyze it, um, you're in some ways kind of like a gang. You might not be doing a whole lot of stupid illegal crap, but you're still like a little, a little tribe. And that's really what these gangs are. They're just Tribes of people who just happen to do a lot of stupid stuff and illegal things. And I really think that people put um, way, way too much um, hype into it. Um, they think they're like this big old grand mastermind entity. Um, when they're not. They're, they're so broken up and disemboguated, I guess you could say, that you know the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing in some cases. Um, especially when you have, you know, like 800 different sets of crypts, um, and they're not all being strictly organized or led. Now, yeah, they may, some of them may get along, but there's also some infighting that goes on as well. But the symbols, uh, the symbols, you can see these in tattoos or in the form of graffiti. And when you see the graffiti out in somewhere, Graffiti is like a newspaper for the streets. It's It tells a story if you know how to read it. You can go down, driving through the ghetto, driving through the hood. You can find this stuff. Um, and if you sit long enough and, and actually sit there and read it, it tells a story. Um, usually a lot of these things, the author of it will, will sign their name on there somehow or they'll sign their, who they're with, who they're, who they're repping. Um, and they'll be dissing someone or something like that, um, or they could be memorializing someone, someone who's died. You know, they'd be they could put their name on there with the praying hands uh, symbol, or they can actually you know write out R I H rest in heaven or something like that. And when you see just some of their certain symbols, like if you see a uh, let's say for example a a, a five pointed. Um, crown or something like that or a, or a star within that area you know that whoever falls under that people nation whatever gangs in that area that's kind of their turf that's their territory it's kind of like a road sign in a way in that in that sense it lets other people know hey you're now entering uh the vice lords or the latin kings area or you're entering in the crypts or the gangster disciples area um what you see in the video here is some graffiti um, that was recorded by an agency um, somewhere in the US um, and you'll see some of the different um, symbols and everything uh, that some of these people have put on here so for example um, this says four corner hustler graffiti noting their rivals are insane deuces by turning the spade with a two and cracking the two dots upside down and the Spanish Cobras by inverting the diamond with a C. So anytime you see something that's been placed upside down or has been broken in half or is backwards or anything like that, that is a huge sign of disrespect. They're, they, they're dissing someone. Um, 
they're they're in, in a sense they're they're calling them out. You know, they're like calling them a bitch, calling them a hoe, something like that. It's a, in their eyes, it's a very big thing. So this stuff's upside down. That means they're dissing those people. They're disrespecting them. If you see things like symbols that are upside down, like say for example you, you see a heart with wings in an area, but then you see the, the heart with wings drawn upside down, they're disrespecting uh, those people over in that area. You see um, a Playboy bunny, if you see it upside down, um, whoever under folk is that's using that, they're being disrespected by probably most likely someone in people nation. This one here, um, graffiti done by an imperial gangster member, letter I and G with a number seven are the main symbols. The overturned staff with five circles with the number five inside is the main symbol for the Spanish Lords, which are noted as obvious rivals in this picture. This one, um, Saints Graffiti, prominent symbols are the S and N on a cloud with a halo with three marks. Arrows on both sides displaying this area belongs to them. So they're saying, hey, this whole area, it's ours. Numbers 47 indicate this faction is from 47th Street. This gang is expressing that the 2-6 gang is their adversary by breaking the three dots and with the letters TSK. So 2-6 gang, 2-6, and then they add K at the end, so 2-6 killer. They're disrespecting the 2-6 gang, and they're saying that this is their area, and not only are they saying this is this, this, this is their area, but this is the group that they're from, 47th Street. 47th Street owns whatever that was marked on. In a way, you could also say that this is sort of synonymous with a uh, no trespassing sign. <laughs> It's just a, a an odd way of writing no trespassing. Here you can see 13 which is indicative of it being affiliated with MS-13. The number 13 um, is representing MS-13. The split crown that is termed turned upside down demonstrates their rivalry with the Latin Kings in that area. So the Latin Kings are using a three-pointed star. 13 put that three-pointed, I'm sorry, not star, they put that crown, three-pointed crown, upside down, broke it in half with their 13. Meaning that they beefing. This is kind of a, a, a big one here. Um, <clears throat> the graffiti on this wall was done by a 2-6 member. GTSN, which is going to be up in here, stands for Gangster 2-6 Nation. On the left side, there is a split devil face denoting disrespect towards the Satan disciples. On the right, there is a split five-point star showing disrespect towards the People Nation. The gang symbols on the bottom are signifying their enemies in this geographic area. The fallen gangs are being disrespected. Ambrose, um, Latin kings, and Latin counts, saints, and a couple others. So this is this is a, this is a, this is a lot going on in this image right here. And sometimes the letters, you know, they like to use some of this this older style of letters. I guess you could say, and I guess to them it, it looks it looks nicer, it's more aesthetic looking. Um, and they also, some of them have kind of like their own version of an alphabet. Uh, they'll alter some of the letters of the normal alphabet to, to represent the different letters, letters of the alphabet. 
and then it, it can get con pretty confusing then. And then you really have to study um, all this crap that they write to really figure out what they're talking about. So this one right here, you can see is a bunny, at a bunny head upside down. Disrespecting those people. Um, some of the other stuff that you see going on in there. Um, they're in strong opposition with the folks. Without knowing the affiliation of the Latin Kings, it can be assumed they are affiliated with the people. Um, Latin saint symbol of a stick man. The stick man right here is turned upside down, so they're disrespecting the Latin saints. Um, the author wrote his name down here. He's King Evil. It's kind of hard to make that out. It's King Evil. Upside down cross um, with five slashes is shown uh, that they're against the, the Latin counts. This star being over, or this cross being over here. Um, you got a hooded figure over here in this corner. Just this. Um, so here's the hood, here's the arms, here's the gown, here's the staff. Kind of like the, the cartoonish version of death or whatever. Uh, this dude's upside down. Um, uh, the spade over here is upside down. So there's a whole lot of disrespect going on in this image right here. Here's another example or more example of some graffiti. Let me slip that one. And then I'll go to this one. Try to zoom in. All right. Um, so this is uh, two six being inverted. The TS symbols inverted. So they're showing disrespect there. Um, all throughout this thing. Um, let's see if you can see it over here. So this right here is the upside down flag for La Raza. Um, the flag being upside down is disrespect. The L and the R, the R is upside down. And then the K is added to the end. So they're disrespecting the La Razas by saying that they're La Raza killers. They kill La Razas. A lot of the stuff that you see on the walls is just them talking crap back and forth to each other. Uh, but some of the stuff is also them showing um, their, their, their area, their turf, so to speak. And here's just some more um, artwork, if you could call it artwork. Um, some more drawings and, and phrases and logos and stuff like that that you could see in the form of either tattoos or uh, graffiti on walls. So the FBI has termed Juggalos as a gang. <laughs> um, I kind of laughed when I first heard that because I wouldn't really associate Juggalos as being on the same level as Crips. But there has probably been enough people who openly identify as Juggalo who've been doing a lot of stupid crap and committing a lot of crimes that someone within the FBI said, hey, uh, this is probably a game. Uh, Juggalos are people who are fans or followers of the group known as Insane Clown Posse, ICP. The two dudes who dress up in clown makeup. Um, I don't know how you describe their, their music. It's like, um, it's like rap music. Sort of. Um, I, I really don't know how to explain their genre of music, um, but they're all into the the horror theme, you know, clowns and scary stuff. And the guys call themselves Juggalos and the girls call them Juggalettes. But their main image is the Running Man with the hatchet. The hatchet is being one of the the key symbols of that group. Again, I, they're not on the level, in my opinion, of being like Crips. Uh, but there's just a bunch of them who 
who wear, they got a necklace. I've seen necklaces like this. Uh, there's tattoos, you know, the guys will get on their shoulders or their chest or arms or something like that. Um, there's just been probably enough of these dummies who have gone out and done a bunch of crimes and a bunch of stupid stuff and someone started noticing all these symbols popping up and was like, hey, there's a gang. So this can be indicative of dealing with a stupid person. So other types of uh, gangs would be motorcycle clubs. People like your Outlaws, Hells Angels, Grim Reapers, Banditos, groups like that. Um, they're pretty easy to pick out because they say who they are right on the back of their vest. They say Outlaws. And if that's not cool enough, they tell you where they're from. So they don't really um, hide a lot of their stuff in this, this cryptic crap drawing that you see Crips and Bloods draw in. It's, it's like this crap right here. Um, they make it kind of easy to see. Now, this is their typical, uh, their typical garb that they wear. They wear this, this biker vest and they have their colors on the back, their patches, whatever. And each, each group has, you know, a different logo. But like I said, uh, the name's usually on the top rocker panel and their location's on the bottom. Um, and some of these groups, like the Outlaws, they're even in places like, excuse me, Australia and Canada. Now, not everywhere you go, you're going to see, um, you know, 100%, you know, nitty gritty, sons of anarchy type of people. Um, some of them are just kind of like uh, wannabes. And the same goes for the Crips, you know. Like, you go to some podunk town in Kentucky and you find someone who's repping <laughs> that they're a Crip. They're, <laughs> they might say they're a Crip, they're not really a Crip. If you drop their little butt off somewhere in Los Angeles where the real Crips were, uh, they, 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 uh, they'd probably be dead. Uh, now you go into certain areas of the country, you're going to find different groups are a whole lot meaner than groups in other areas. Um, it's just the roll of the dice, so to speak, with the type of people that's involved in those organizations. But typically, um, these groups are known as one percenters. There's kind of a history behind uh, motorcycle clubs and uh, the one percenters being um, basically banned from um, the the big uh, organization of motorcycle clubs or whatever, um, and the one percenters being uh, you know they're like the one percent of the population or whatever that uh, you know do the things that they do. They're the they're the the quote unquote outlaws. Um, they don't. Um, go with normal society to kind of do their own thing. Um, <clears throat> you'll also, on the front of these vests, you will see a 1% patch on some of them, and you may see other types of patches or whatever that's on the front of the vest, but typically the backs look like these. Um, the people who are um, fresh into the group uh, they'll have probationary written on their back or they'll have a patch that says probationary on there somewhere and They're they're trying to be a full patched member. They just haven't got there yet. The women you will also see uh, They'll wear the logos and stuff uh, But they'll have something on their vest. They'll be like property of and these groups will look at women as pieces of property and um their apparel will denote that as such. You may also see other bikers out and about and they're going to be wearing vests as well but it's just normal vests with normal patches on there like you may see some dude with a beard on a Harley driving down the road and he's got this thing on and if you don't know what you're looking at you could think that, oh, that's a that's a motorcycle guy. He's a or a motorcycle club guy. He's a 
He's a he's a he's a gang member. No, it's just some dude wearing a vest with a bunch of patches on there. You got to look at the patches to know uh, what you're looking at. Now, going back to this, so um, the, as I said earlier, these are are really heavy in different areas. Um, you have to know your area to know which one of these groups is going to be bigger in. Um, and then there's also some not listed on here, like around here we have uh, Grim Reapers and then we have more of a local chapter, I guess you could say, a group called Misfits. Um, and that's also going to be um, in smaller areas all across the U.S. You're going to find uh, smaller groups that kind of go by their own name. Um, they're not really a part of these bigger organizations. They may have alliances, just like um, under Folk Nation. Uh, your gangster disciples might be in alliance with some crips, so you might have, you know, this little um, group, you know, AYZ, they have an alliance with outlaws, or they have an alliance with uh, the Mongols, or something like that. You also have your white supremacist groups, your uh, skinheads, neo-Nazis, uh, KKK, those kind of people. Um, again, they're pretty easy to spot out too. Uh, typically, they're all white. Um, and they usually have pretty distinguishing tattoos on them, like this, um, I believe that's called a Celtic cross. Um, they may even spell it out in tattoos and say, white power. <laughs> How original is that? Um, and you can see another one of the, the crosses, at least an iron cross that's tattooed in the back there. Um, the ironclad eagle, that's another popular thing with some of these idiots. Uh, swastikas, obviously, they're going to have swastikas, you know, tattooed here and there on them. Uh, nothing else good in these images. Um, so, some other things you may see with some of these groups is uh, they can do dice too in the form of tattoos. Um, but before I explain that dice, I should probably go to the top and explain the top first. You might be a little clueless. So there's a couple different numbers. Uh, you can either see it in this variation, 1488, or you may see it split up with a slash in between there, 1488. Or you may see 88 just all by itself, or you may see 14 all by itself. Uh, a playoff of 1488, you can be you can be found within the dice. So one, four. And then 8, 14, 88. And then the same down here. You can just see the playoff within the dice with the numbers and everything. Uh, 1488 is um, their slang. Uh, 14 goes into something. Um, something, what is it called? Uh, the 14, 14 word slogan. Um, it's something that is believed to be derived from. Adolf Hitler's uh, autobiography, uh, Mein Kampf. So it says something about um, securing freedom for white people and children or something like that. Um, 88 is, 8 is the 8th letter, letter of the alphabet, H. So H, H stands for Hail Hitler. Um, you may see Zog written on stuff. That's uh, Zionist government, Zionist, something, occupational government. Then you can see like the SS marks, like what the Nazis had, um, the Celtic Cross, I believe it's called. Um, you may even see this, this acronym spelled out, um, uh, white power worldwide. And then there's a few other things that they'll use, but these are kind of the common ones. Um, if it looks like it probably belongs in World War II with the, the Nazis, um, you, your, your best bet is it's, it's probably going to be a, a white supremacist group. 
Um, and then of course you can also see these people using things like the uh, Confederate flag and uh, uh, the KKK symbol and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, going back to a little bit more of uh, folk nation and people nation, some of the um, stuff that they wear can also be a clue that um, they're in a gang or that there's some gang activity going on. Now, this isn't concrete just because someone's wearing a hat like you see right there. It doesn't mean they're a gang. You gotta take it into context with the surroundings, the person wearing it, etc. Um, but this uh, university, uh, Georgetown University hat, um, one of the popular things on them would be the G, G being for gangster. Um, or seventh letter of the alphabet. They're all about being a gangster. Um, but the the Hoyas, so um, this could be um, associated um, with folk nation and it could um, be with a group like the Crips or something and it could stand for Hoover on your ass slob or Hoover on your ass sucker. Hoover being the guy Larry Hoover, who started Folk Nation. So, you're, if you're in an area and you see um, some dude on the street corner and you see a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of like um, pitchforks, you know, tray painted on the wall and Playboy bunnies and dice with you know rolling the six and horns and a winged heart, stuff like that, or Star of David, and, or this dude's got like a um, Star of David tattooed on his neck or something like that, and he's wearing this hat. Well, you got pretty good two identifiers right there. Um, chances are, you know, that dude's in some, in some stupid stuff. Um, and again, this is another one that you got to take in the context. If you go to a sporting event and you see someone wearing this, it doesn't necessarily mean they're part of a game. But again, it's all about the environment and the background, so um, for individuals associated with people gangs, such as Piru, which is the predecessor to Bloods, um, the Bulls logo to them stands for Bloods Usually Live Longer Sucker. So uh, it being, you know, something that People Nation um, would be wearing if you're in an environment, and again, you're seeing something like... Uh, you know, they got like a, a 3D pyramid tattooed on their arm, or the pyramid has like 21 bricks inside of it, or there's a, uh, a five-pointed crown or something like that, and they're wearing something like that. Again, those are, are pretty good indicators. Um, there's several more of these in here. Some of them will take a pretty good while to explain. Um, you know, something like that could stand for Crips Rule. But again, it's, it's situational dependent. Does it match the environment? If you're at a sports game, of course people are going to be wearing this stuff. Just because they're wearing it doesn't mean they're a gang. you got to take it into context with where you're at. So another sure sign that there's a gang activity going on is a bunch of young people walking around contorting their fingers like they got cerebral palsy or something. If you see a bunch of young people walking around with their fingers all twisted and stupid looking, it's a pretty good sign you got some gang activity going on. Uh, this is a typical sign for Crip. Got one for blood. You can see the letter B. Another way of seeing the letter B. Vice. Lords, insane vice lords, and if you um, put the fingers together, you know you could be a part of the Shocker Gang, <laughs> Latin King. Um, here's a slew of different ones. Here's your quintessential West Side. So again, if you just see people throwing these kind of these little signs up on their hands. No, they don't have a medical problem. Um, they got they got a life problem. Oh, this one's upside down. 
they are making their hand into the K for king. If I can get this flip right side up. Um, another one, and I don't have these in this slide here. Again, another one that's upside down. Uh, double king with a uh, three point crown. Some of them that I don't have in there, like MS-13, um, they'll do one like this. Um, some of the white supremacist people, they'll do uh, that. I can't get the angle right on the camera, but these is the W, and then this is supposed to be the P, standing for white power. Insane Crip. Uh, there's one for East Side. Uh, this this person is signing out BK for Blood Killer, and that's another thing too. Uh, so if you see BK spray in, spray painted somewhere, um, they're they're saying they're a blood killer. They're gonna um, kill the bloods. And if you see CK somewhere, that sound stands for Crip Killer, a pitchfork. Um, which, if you remember anything I talked about, this would be indicative of someone being under Folk Nation or with some group like Gangster Disciples or Crips or something like that. Crip Killer. Usually, you know, you, people are, you know, signing this stuff back and forth to each other. Um, you know, that could be a prelude to a fight about to go on. King Killer. Kill some Latin kings. Three point crown. People nation playboy bunny. So there's a, there's all kinds of different hand signals that you could be seeing, but really the gist of it is if you see people contorting their fingers and hands, and they're pretty young, uh, they don't have a medical problem. They got a life problem, and they're they're doing some gang stuff. Uh, like that little video of that little boy, you know, him and that them and their friends are just doing hood rat shit. Um, so that is about it on this video. Um, I think I've covered pretty much all of the basics. Um, again, some of these gangs, if you go in the bigger towns, bigger cities, they're obviously going to be a little bit more organized. They're going to be a little bit more meaner and ruthless. Um, whereas smaller towns, maybe not so much. But that, does, that, that doesn't mean that they're not going to be that bad. Uh, for example, here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, uh, back in 1996, there was a group called the Asian Boys. Um, Bowling Green, back in 96, um, is not as big as it is now. Uh, it's a pretty small town. Um, this Asian Boys gang, uh, they broke into the house of this family, drove the family into the bathroom, lined them up, shot them. Uh, in the head, execution style, killed the dad and the mom. Uh, the daughter survived, but the daughter ended up having to like relearn how to walk, write, tie shoes, stuff like that. Um, and then there's two, two or three other boys in the family. Uh, they weren't, they weren't uh, shot. Um, but this was again, it was like six people in this gang. Um, Six people who went to the house and, and did this, um, but the, the gang itself, it wasn't big. Like it was just a little podunk group of people um, who called themselves a gang. They said they're Asian boys, um, and then they went out and they did, did this very ruthless thing in what was a pretty small town. Um, and and comparatively speaking, even now, even though Bowling Green is the uh, third largest city in Kentucky, it's still a pretty small town. It's not it's not big by any means. Um, you go into other areas of, um, of the, of the country, small towns, you're always going to find, uh, those, those typical losers who say they're part of this gang. Most of the time they end up being nothing. They're just dummies. Uh, but every once in a while you come across a couple who do some real deal stuff and, um, they made a name for themselves in that small town and then they went off to prison and, um, either they, they sank when they got there or they, they, uh, they learned to swim. Probably a lot of them uh, probably sank when they first got there because they just they haven't had those experiences like the ones in Los Angeles do or in, within big inner cities.
If you found this uh, video helpful or useful or even interesting, go ahead and give me a like and a share. Go ahead and uh, post your questions down in the comment section. Go ahead and send me a, a message as well if you have any questions, but uh, go ahead and, and throw them down there in the comment section. There's no such thing as a stupid question, so if you're afraid about your question being stupid, don't think so. Um, head on over to the Facebook page and do the same over there. Earl Henderson, Primordial Defense. Thank you for watching.